So our goal here is to take everything that we've learned from the video tutorials that I've done on YouTube so far, and we are going to make a, for right now, super basic Twitch bot. So what I've done so far is I've just made a quick GitHub repository for what we are currently calling Sir Silverbot. That name will probably change over time. You can name your bot whatever you want. And first thing we're going to do is I should probably order my folder structure. So I'm going to make a new folder. Give me a source folder. So just a clean SRC. And in this folder, we're going to initialize a new NPM project. So if you haven't seen any of the previous videos, we're going to do is first, you're going to need to have Node.js installed, which that's all in the playlist stuff. And I'll probably put it, the links for that in the description of the video. What we're going to do is we're going to start off by initiating a NPM project so we can use Node.js for this. So start off, you open up your console. And you can also do this in just the command line or PowerShell. I'm actually rather biased forward PowerShell. I know a lot of people don't like it, but I like it. So you npm init. We're just going to call our package name the same thing as that. So your Silverbot. And we really don't care about a version number right now. So since this repository, it's not going to be public right away until I can figure out a good license for it. So we're just going to leave it at, just call it one. Oh, and that, just go for it. A description, so you can just put in whatever description you want right here. And we're going to do an entry point of, yeah, index.js is fine. We're not going to be using this right away anyway, so index.js is fine. Test command, not worried about that. That is the GitHub repository, and we're not worried about any keywords right now. Author, I'll put that later. License. It's just for now, put MIT is okay. Yes. All right. So what this has done for us is we have created a package.json right here. What this is going to do for us is this is going to allow us to add in more packages and APIs, etc. that is going to allow us to have the functionality needed to build this bot. So first thing we're going to need to do now that we have that is we are going to create a new file in our source folder. We're going to create a JavaScript file. We're going to call it, let's just call it bot. I'm going to call it bot.js. The name it whatever you want, but if you're following along, just call it bot.js. In order to actually get in the information that we need from Twitch chat in order to manipulate things and even read Twitch chat at all, we're going to need to install a new package from the node package manager, which is what NPM stands for. What we're going to do is we are going to install a library called tmi.js. And the way that we're going to go about doing this is we're going to use this command right here. So npm install tmi.js dash dash save. So you need this dash dash save right here in order to add the package to your package.json file. Otherwise, things are going to get kind of hairy. And so you can see on the screen the various uh, sites you're going to need in order to get the documentation and just general information for this API. So this is the website for the package itself gives you a nice quick tutorial for it. So this is just a, a wiki way of connecting things. So, and then this is the GitHub repository for the same package, if you're interested in more of the technical side of it. This is the actual documentation for the API, you're going to be using the heck out of this. So make sure you have a tab open for this. So first thing we're going to do is we are going to 
open up our ter terminal again, and we're going to put in the very same command that we just saw a moment ago. So we enter. This is probably going to take a minute. Now that we've got that installed, that's going to update our packages and stuff on the left. You'll see in our folder structure that the packages and stuff have been updated. You'll also notice that we get a package lock that JSON, which gives you more direct information about the uh, packages you have installed. You shouldn't have to worry about this, but it's just fun to know it's there in case you ever need it to. You probably shouldn't. But you'll notice once you open your package JSON again, you'll see that you have a new line right here called dependencies, and then you have tmi.js right there. So that's how you know that you've got it installed. Now, in order to actually get the API imported into our file, what we need to do is we need to have a require command. And the way you do that, which is how you import either an API or a separate file, into a node project is you want to have a constant typically at the top and in this case we're going to call it tmi which is the name of the api itself we want that to be equal to a command called require with a parameter of tmi.js so same thing as what we called it earlier we are also, I'm just getting ahead of ourselves here, but we're also going to need a configuration file for being able to access the chat itself. So that is going to require us to create another file. So what you want to do is you want to create a file in your source folder called a new JavaScript file specifically. You want to call it config.js. The configuration file is simply going to be a singular JSON object that is going to hold our username for the bot. Now you can do this with your own Twitch account, or you can do it with a separate Twitch account that you plan on using for your bot. And the way that that's going to be structured is you want to have just a constant, we're going to call it and fig, that is going to be equal to a JSON object that's going to contain an attribute called identity. And that is going to be another JSON object containing a username, which in this case is going to be a string, and a password, which is also going to be a string. Once you have that, in order to export this, in order to make it available to the remainder of your program, what you're going to do is you're going to call module.exports, exports equals config. It's just going to pull all of this and make it to where we can do the very same thing that we did a minute ago with pulling in the API, the TMI API. We're going to do the same thing there. We're going to create a constant. We're going to call it configuration. That is going to be the same thing as what we had before. We're going to say require. And instead of calling a external API, since we're calling something that is directly within our folder structure, because you can see on the left, it's in the same folder as our bot file. We're going to call it within the same folder. It should be a string. In order to call something within the same folder, you want to have a dot and a slash. What that does is it tells the, the compiler, or the, the interpreter, I should say, that what you're looking for is in the same folder that you're currently in, and then just use the file name without JS. So we had the, the file name for our configuration file called config. Now, in order to have this work, I'm going to need to actually 
put in some information that uh, you probably shouldn't see. So I'm going to hide the screen for a minute. And I'm going to copy in some information that I have pulled in from elsewhere. Otherwise, y'all are going to have access to my bot. And that's going to be no bueno. Future Silver here. I didn't realize until editing this video that I never explained what information you need in your config file. This is what it looks like. The identity attribute is a JSON object containing your bot's username and password as strings. Your password is an OAuth key generated on twitchapps.com slash TMI, not your bot account's Twitch password. I'll leave a link to that in the description. The channel's attribute is an array of strings telling the bot whose Twitch chat you want it to connect to. You'll notice that I forget this later in the video. That should be everything you need to know. Here's what we're going to do. Uh, I've put in all the information and I've closed the file so I can't accidentally open it and show that, you know, my, my bot's password. So we're going to create a connection between the bot and chat. And the way that we're going to do that is we're going to create a new constant and just call it chatbot. So all of this, we're going to have a constant. And for those of you that are absolutely new to JavaScript, a constant is a variable. And a variable is nothing more than just a name that contains some kind of data that we're trying to manipulate. So we're going to make a constant called chatbot. And that is going to be equal to a new TMI client. And that is going to take just a single argument, and that's going to be the configuration that we created earlier. All right, now what we need to do, now that we have an actual client created, we're going to tell it what to do whenever a chat message comes in. We're, and what we're going to do with that, and how we're going to do that is we're going to create what's called a listener. And a listener is essentially just something that obviously listens for an event. So in this case, what the bot is doing is it's just paying attention to my specific Twitch chat, and it is trying to wait for messages to come in, and then once it detects that a message has come in, it's going to take that and then say, okay, when this happens, we're going to do, we're going to run this function to do something with it. So the event, the specific event that we're listening for is going to be called message. And the events that you are listening for, the events that are available to be listened for can be seen on the API. So uh, this is back in the API documentation. So I went to the events page on the API documentation. So these are all of the event names that you can listen for. So like we can uh, specifically go for a chat message. We can wait for someone to do a cheer. We can, whenever someone posts the channel, we can do something. Whenever someone joins the channel, we can do something. These are all of the different options of things that we can do that we can listen for. And so the one that we're specifically listening for today is just a message. And you can see, like what we're trying to do, we called our we called our variable chatbot, the documentation calls it client. So what we're doing is we're going to say on a message event, we're going to create a function that tells us the channel that it's for. The user it's going to give us information on the user that sent the message, it's going to uh, give us the message itself, and then it's going to tell us if the person sending the message is us or not. So that's what that means by self. So in this case, if Death Star 070 was to send a message, self would be true. But if anyone else sends a message, self would be false. And you can basically get 
all of that stuff here. This documentation is currently like three years old. So this is what the user state, this one right here. So I said this would give us information on the user itself that sent the message. So this is the information that would be given as of three years ago. But whenever we set this up for ourselves, we're actually going to tell it to print out the user state for us so we can see if anything has changed in the last three years or so. And June, thank you for that 11 month sub, ma'am. I very much appreciate it. So let's, let's finish what we were doing here. But in this case, we are going to, instead of just creating the function within the listener itself, we're going to have a call, a separate function that we're going to write in a minute. And we're just going to call this chat message handler. And it's going to show that there's going to be an error right there because we don't actually have the chat message handler set up yet. But that's going to be in just a moment. At this point, one of my moderators in chat pointed out some information about the self-parameter of the chat message handler that I didn't know about. Did you learn by accident, Azura, that you were, as you were doing your own bot, self is set if the TMI client sends the message specifically. If a human or other program sends a message using the same account, self is false. Okay. So only if the bot itself sends the message self is true. Good to know. And now back to your regularly scheduled programming. Now that we have a listener set up, we need to have the bot actually connect to chat. So that's just a simple matter of chatbot.connect. That's it. And now is the time to actually set up the listener for the, sorry, the function that will run whenever a message comes into chat. So we're going to do it because we're going to just create a basic function and we're going to call it the same thing that we had called it earlier. So we're going to call it chat message handler. And it's going to take in four parameters, the same four parameters that we saw in the documentation earlier. And those parameters being the channel, that the message is coming into, which is obviously going to be here. The user state, which is everything relating to the user that sent the message, the message itself, and self, which is going to say if the bot itself is sending the message or not. And what we can do with this is we can just do a super quick test. So we're just going to create a simple console.log to uh, print out the message of chat to see if we're actually getting a connection and uh, things actually are working as intended. So we're just going to do a console.log and we're just going to log out the message. That's all we're doing. All right. In order to uh, run the file, we're going to want to do is we're going to open the terminal again. We're going to go into the source folder. So you want to do CD and then the same thing that we had earlier. So slash source. And just do it like that. It's going to put us in the source folder. And then we're going to say node bot dot JS. This is probably not going to work the first time. Things will never work the first time. It worked the first time. Chat, if you would be so kind as to put something in chat so we can see if this works. A few moments later. It did not work. What did I do wrong? You know what I probably forgot? I probably forgot something in my configuration file that shows which channels it needs to connect to. Yes, I exactly forgot that. But that's my fault. I need to add in one more thing to our configuration file, which means I have to hide the screen for a moment. So you're going to add in a new attribute to your configuration file. I can't show this 
actually I can, hold on. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is you're going to uh, add in a new uh, attribute to your config file. You're gonna call it channels, and then that is going to be an array of strings. And in this case, the only channel that we're gonna actually connect to is mine. So that is going to be in all lowercase your silver star. So now this should work. That is running again. If you would like to try some chat messages again, hopefully it should work this time. There we go. Success. And that, in fact, is how you are going to create the super basic setup of a Twitch bot. Now, before we end this particular video for YouTube, what I want to do is I want to actually see what the full user state is. So instead of doing the message, I want to see what the user state is going to be so we can get an idea of what the information that we get on specific users is going to be whenever someone sends a message. So, chat. One more time, if you would give me just something, anything in chat, I just need one person, to, then I can kill it, because we only need one person's information. It doesn't matter who. So this gives us quite a bit of information on the, the message itself, or the, the person that is sending a message. So what this tells us is we get badge information since Cherry doesn't have any particular badges, meaning like there's no um, like sub badge, there's no um, Twitch Turbo badge, there's no Twitch Prime badge, no Twitch Con, etc. badges. She has no mess. She has no badges by her name, so the badge info is going to be null. Also, the badges themselves. The color is the hex value for the color of her name, and. Uh, and the display name, you'll notice there's a display name and then there is a username. So the username is the one that is directly connected to Twitch chat. So since Twitch chat is built off of uh, IRC, which is just a super old school way of doing uh, instant messaging, usernames are typically in all lowercase. But the Display name is what we actually see in chat. So we actually get the capitalizations, you know, we get all the symbols, whatever have you. That's what we get for the display name. And then we also get the message type. So what we can do here, if we look at the documentation again, we can differentiate between a chat message, which is what she did, or a whisper. This is going to prove interesting for some of the things that we want to do later. And then we can do like actions. So things like, uh, I want to say like doing slash me in chat is considered an action. So like if we wanted to do something specific for like a slash me command, we could do that. And then so on and so forth. So let me try this one more time. If someone that has, someone that's either a mod or um, someone that has some kind of icons near their name could send something in chat. We could see the difference. So like, for example, Azure or Anger would probably be a good one. Okay, so this gives us a number of badge information things. So this is for Azure, who is one of my moderators. So what we get is for badge info, he is a eight month subscriber. And so if I were to hover over his chat thing, well, it's actually, let me pull chat down so we can show this. Okay. So like if I hover over Azure's name right here, so his sub bad, so you can see right here, it shows eight month subscriber, which is what you can see right here. It also shows that he's a moderator. This is the color of his name. There were no emotes in the chat. This is not his first message. 
There's no flags on like, probably his account. He is a moderator, so that's true. This is the ID of the room that it's being sent to, and then just other things. So, uh, yeah, so you, it seems like you get some uh, duplicate information. However, we will be using a bit of this information as we go along in order to uh, specify who can do certain things within the bot. So that should be a good, decent overview of how to set up a Twitch bot just to get it connected and ready to go to create commands. Now, in the next video, we are actually going to create a command that then Twitch chat can activate and use. So, please look forward to it.